I'm Linda Elsiegood, founder of the LDN Research Trust. It has been my honour to interview LDN researchers, prescribers, pharmacists and patients from around the world for many conditions. Thank you for joining us. This evening I'm joined by Dr. Kate McIsaac from Florida in the United States. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Could you tell us when you first heard about LDN? Um, I believe it was around 2006. I'd say roughly that would be the time when I first started uh, using it. And uh, frankly, I I can't say specifically where I read about it, but it was some type of a, um, uh, a, a research that I was doing for another reason and, and came across the the, uh, the topic of LDN. And I had, of course, associated with the usual um, on-label use for naltrexone, which made me a little bit you know, reluctant to research LDN more. But um, once I started doing it, it sounded very interesting and made a lot of sense uh, biochemically. So that's when I started to use it in, in my patients. Mm-hmm. What conditions have you treated so far? Well, I... I started back at that time with probably the more familiar applications, which is for uh, fibromyalgia and chronic pain conditions, as well as uh, migraine and uh, insomnia. So those were the things that I started out with. And it was, of course, and probably is a common experience with most prescribers, is that for fibromyalgia, what we're calling fibromyalgia, um, uniformly, I, I got a very great response for reduction in pain and increase. Uh, quality of sleep in those patients. And I'm sure I've had, you know, I probably had not a huge population, but probably, you know, 70 or 80 patients who um, were uh, responders during maybe 2006 up until 2010, roughly that time frame. And I really didn't know the broader applications. I think it was, I I tended to associate it with pain or some type of a uh, you know, instability with sleep. You know, in more recent years, I've started to use it on anyone who had autoimmune conditions, just even simple things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, knowing that some of those patients could have other autoimmune impact on other organ systems other than, other than the thyroid. So, um, and I, you know, I have a, a small population of, of patients with chronic neurologic uh, disorders. I have like probably 10 or 12 MS patients uh, for um, ALS patients and um, two with a PLS, the progressive lateral sclerosis, who are on LDN now. And, and all of them, you know, they don't, haven't had complete resolution as you, Linda, <laughs> but have certainly had a, a, a greatly improved quality of life with, uh, you know, certain uh, coordination improvement and articulation improvement, swallowing improvement, um, all of those um, probably had a draw a line through it, say that maybe about a 60% improvement in their quality of life. So it's very impressive. Um, I don't have a large pediatric population, but I do have one child just recently that I started on LDN for who's on the autism spectrum. So I'm really interested to see how she does, especially after you've been telling me about this recent um, conference with a physician who has a lot of uh, kids on LDN. So for all the patients that you've prescribed LDN for, have any reported adverse side effects? I would say I have had less than 10 who who decided to stop using LDN, either because they didn't notice an, any improvement or because they did not like the some type of a side effect, which would be along the lines of uh, you know the, the intolerable vivid dreams that they deemed intolerable and didn't want to stick with it. Um, or, uh, you know, a feeling of nausea, you know, some type of a GI type of uh, side effect that they also didn't want to uh, continue. Um, but those were, not, those were people who really had mild cases of whatever the condition was. They really were not as motivated probably as other people who are, have more uh, debilitating conditions and would be willing to, you know, adapt uh, or take the time to adapt. And, and what I have learned, too, uh, in, in more recent years is, is it's to drop it really low when you're starting uh, to dose somebody and really go slowly as you're progressing up in the dose um, rather than the original method that I had um, was using was just starting like at one and a half milligrams and working up to as much as four and a half. Um, so, you know, I've, I've actually had my, my compounding pharmacy 
made it into a uh, into a suspension so that um, a drop, for instance, would be like a half a milligram so that uh, the patients could start really low and, and titrate up as tolerated um, over a longer period of time. And that, that works m- much better because some, some just stay on doses less than, less than a milligram, which is interesting mm. that that small amount would be adequate. Definitely, because over the years I've found that starting low and working up how you suggest the dropout rate has reduced rapidly because people are not getting the side effects that are putting them off. There are doctors that will say if people have um, trouble sleeping that they can take it in the morning and they find that works just as well. And if they have GI problems, there is um, sublingual drops which are absorbed bypassing the stomach. So there are different things we're learning over the years to tweak it to combat those said side effects but it's good that nobody has reported to you anything that is out of the norm should we say and actually i i have recently started there are three people i'm I'm using daytime dosing with ldn4 trying to help with you know dependency type of issues with you know smoking smoking and and alcohol (laughs) so it was actually uh, and I, I don't know if that if that's been a common use or not, but it just seemed to make sense if someone was not as if they're having a craving for something, if the brain is, you know, doctored up a bit, so to speak, that <laughs> that there would be less of a um, a craving for nicotine or alcohol. So, you know, that's just a virgin tour for me right now. And perhaps you have people using it in that capacity that you know of. Uh, yes, please. we have, and um, OCD as well another mm-hmm. one um and as I, I was saying to you before we started um dr phil boyle his presentation is very interesting where he talks about infertility and it was funny i was talking to dr phil boyle after one of the conferences and i was saying that as i was getting older my body was was changing because i used to have endometriosis and it, okay. it, it was mm-hmm. awful. I mean, I had problems from the age of 11. By the time I reached mm, my mid-20s, I'd I'd had about 12 DNCs and fibroids and polyps and all sorts of things removed. Um, <clears throat> and I said to him, it must be the age that I am because all of the, the pain and the heavy bleeding and everything, it's all stopped. You know, and I was only getting like three days a month where I, I didn't have some form of really bad stomach cramps. So he said, so when did that actually stop? So I was saying, well, it stopped. And, and I told him roughly how many years before it stopped. And he said, so how long had you been on LDN? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, only a few months. And, and that had cleared it up but apparently he uses it for a lot of women's problems as well um and people have told me that uh you know pms it works really really well for as well so mm-hmm. yeah it the i wonder about sorry i wonder about i wonder about pcos too if that is something that's been documented i, I haven't had a patient to trial try that on on, on the polycystic ovarian um syndrome whether I, be I think some... I've had one lady one lady I think uh-huh. um who has has found that to have helped you know I, I don't consider my experiences to be something that's unique and from what I gather you know, reading just on regular uh online uh so I think I just just by discovering your website and everything it just makes it much more you know, in the past week, I've been probably giving it to everybody I've seen <laughs> the past week, just for any reason. And um, so I, I think it's just from, from rather than me contributing too much to your site, I think you're going to be teaching me a lot, which is going to be great. So I appreciate I, that. So if there are people out there from Florida who would like to have an appointment with you, how do they contact you? Um well, through the my, well, my office telephone, or the they can make appointments on our website too, online. So, 
And um, you would you like to say your web address? Oh sure. It's um it's at Healing Alternatives, which is plural. Healing Alternatives Inc. I N C dot com is the website. And our phone number in uh the Orlando area is four oh seven six eight two seven one one one. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. Oh, well, thank you very much for doing this, Linda. It's <laughs> great. Do you have LDN experience to share? If so, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you.